Hey, I'm here with Jeremy Pielemeyer, the VP for Elder Care Insurance out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Yep. We met like seven years ago, and I'm telling you what, you don't know this at the time, but when I was a, we were starting Secure Insurance Group, February of 14, and I was a brand new to the independent world. Huh? Dude, I idolized you, okay? Not in a <laughs> weird way, but I was looking up to, because literally we went to talk to Elder Care, and I'm like, man, this dude, is doing something crazy special because because the office was like highlighting you as like the sales guru right okay were you always good at sales or it was came natural or like what, what made you so good so quick oh i didn't know i was good so thanks for that i really yeah. appreciate it um you know i've i've always been in sales i took my first sales job when i was 13. i was uh i was that kid on saturday that was trying to sell eight dollar peanut clusters um you know in the neighborhood yes and so um i love sales i love helping people and you know really um you're probably giving me a little too much credit because um we're selling a product that people need mm. and so i think that if you're out there um and you're doing what's best for the customer it just yes. it just comes natural so you think anybody can do this oh absolutely yeah, yeah. for sure yeah, so so it's like okay, rocket scientist, insurance. You know, we neither one of one of us are smart enough, so we would have to go sell insurance. Yeah. Uh, how old are you now? Uh, forty two. Forty two. Doesn't yep. look forty two. When you said you had a sixteen year old, I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. I don't believe you. That's crazy. He looks crazy good for forty two. Okay, so let's. How long have you been in the business? When did you start? I started in the business uh, August of 2001. So I had my, my 20 year anniversary last month. Dude, yeah. congrats, man. We're yeah. releasing this for its 20 year anniversary. Awesome. I love that. Okay, so August 20, uh, 2001, um, you were 20, 22? Yeah. Okay, and you got started in the business at a young age, right? Yep. We're similar there. Um, what did you start out doing? Like talk through your first year. Were you crazy successful? Did you struggle? No, that's a great question. So um, I came from an industry where it was pretty high pressure sales. Um, I was used to high pressure and close, close, close. What industry was that? Uh, we were in like the window business, siding, okay. uh, selling. Door knocking? Uh, uh, no, we did a lot of our selling okay. over the phone. Okay. And um, so that translated to the insurance industry. And what's crazy uh, that, that most people don't know yeah. is that uh, the first two weeks that I was in the business, I didn't sell a single policy. Um, two weeks, nothing. Two weeks, nothing. Running wow. leads. I had a, a Jeep Wrangler. It just ate the gas up. Who else can relate and, to that, uh, by the way? Okay. Yeah, it was tough. And so the, the breaking point for me was I went into someone's house. I pitched, um, uh, it was a lead card. I, I pitched the plan. I could save the lady $50 a month and she wouldn't take it. Whew. And so out of frustration, I said, I'll tell you what, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll give you the policy if you'll take it. Obviously, uh, you can't do that, and uh, and sure. I didn't have the money uh, to do it. But it was just kind of me being frustrated and yes, saying yes. like, "Hey, uh, if you'll just take it, I just needed someone to say yes." Yes. And she said no. <laughs> so I got back in my car and I was literally driving down the road and I said like, yeah. I, "I can't give this crap away." What? That's true. Yeah, exactly. Which is like, oh my gosh, that's a, that's I'm a, that's terrible at this. Why do you think she said no? Just like a lack of skill, lack of trust. Clearly. Yeah. So um, interesting you asked that. Uh, my, uh, I, I let my fiance or girlfriend at the time, I don't know, wife now, uh, yep. know that this business is not for me. Um, so I was going to wait until the office closed and I was going to quit. Mm. And so her, her dad was actually my sales manager. She gave him a heads up, even though I didn't want her to. Wow. And uh, he was there waiting on me. And uh, basically what he said was I was just too high pressured. I was going in Got and it. I was trying too hard to sell. She felt that. Yeah, I think so. And so um, I didn't end up quitting that day. And, Good for um, you. you know, back in the field selling and yes, it, it worked out great for me. And you're here now. I am. How, how well did you do uh, your first year? Um, you know, I have to look back, but I would say uh, probably first year about 200,000 in new business. Okay, um, like premium? Yep, new yeah. business premium. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to say that now because people write so much, but that was back at a time when you didn't have um, phone leads or, yes. you know, it was it was strictly me getting leads and, and... And that's pretty good, really, for the average new agent. That's probably above average. Yeah. Right? Um, okay, so then, then you kept selling. How many years were you like, okay, actively in the field? Uh, I stayed in the field from 01 to 06. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so five years. Five years. And then uh, what was your best year as an agent back then? Uh, I, I put up 550,000 in premium my last year. Boom. So that's yeah. a nice, that's a nice, nice six figures, right? I was feeling pretty Heavy. good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's phenomenal. Uh, you have, have you seen a lot of agents be able to pull that off in your area? 
you know, nowadays it really comes down to, um, yes, we do see agents putting up that kind of volume. Not every day. Um, no, not every day. Um, but I think the key to it is just getting out and continuing to work. Yes. Um, I believe that, you know, you, you hear a habit and I think, uh, you, you hear habit and you automatically think that's something bad. You have a bad habit. That's right. I think habits are developed both ways. If you get in the habit of working every day, good. Um, then you're going to be successful. If you get in the habit of not working every day, um, then I think that hurts. And yes. um, in this business, in order to be good, you have to be a great boss of yourself mm. because no one is telling you get up go to work true and so that day that you want to get up and paint the fence you're choosing to do something instead of making money yes so yes. It takes a lot of self-discipline yeah right what, what, what's the number one thing you've noticed from a new agent out there that's watching they're like dude i want to be jeremy p lamire when i grow up okay <laughs> choose someone else uh, you don't want to be me <laughs> um what would you say okay you need this you need to be you, you, like here's the number one thing you need to have and if you're out there Hopefully you have it. If you do, once he says it, let us know in comments below. What is that if you had to pick something? Yeah, no, look, he's being uh, amazingly gracious to me, um, but I I'm not super talented. I think the key is um, number one, to do what's best for the customer, mm -hmm. um, to, to not put your commission before the sale. Yes. And I think that if you get up every day and you, you do the right thing, the sales are gonna come because, yes. um, you know, it'd be tough to sell a thousand dollar vacuum cleaner to a lady who's on a $1,200 a month income. Yep. But every person that you see in the Medicare space, they, they need what you have. Whether it's somebody you're gonna save money on a MedSup to, getting them the same benefits or better benefits. Yes. Uh, whether it's somebody who, you know, when I was in the field, we weren't able to sell to people on Medicaid. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to help enroll them into plans that wow. had uh, the benefits. Would you pivot that they had. to FE or what did you do back then? Um, I was strictly uh, a med sub All guy. med sub. And, and that's a huge regret of mine. Yeah. Um, I was kind of a one trick pony. So you where, wouldn't recommend that now? No, no, I, I think that um, uh, when we're talking to agents, we kind of talk about everybody can relate to going to a doctor's office. And you go in and, and you sit down with the doctor and he starts asking you questions. He says like, yes. Cody, how you been feeling? Um, you know, it says here you have a sore throat. Have you been out of town? And he fact finds. Mm, that's right. You don't realize he's doing that, but he's fact finding. Um, and then once he fact okay. finds, he determines what you need. Yes. And then he fills that need. It would be so strange if you showed up to the doctor's office and he says, hey, Cody, nice to see you. I, I think you need a med sub. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think to That's answer good. your question, if I could go back and, and if I had one thing I really feel like I, I missed the boat on, yes. it would be to sit down with people um, and not be their med sub agent yes. and not be their final expense agent, but to be somebody who really wanted to make a difference in helping them. And I know that sounds like a cliche, like, oh, sure. you know, but that 1950s mentality of really caring is what people need. Totally, totally. Uh, you mentioned earlier too, and I love that answer, by the way. Is that good or what? Um, you mentioned earlier that you literally shut off your cell phone yeah. and your car insurance your first year in the business. Yeah, I was not, I was not super There's a sexy. lot that can relate to that, right? Yeah. Um, can you talk about that for a second? Cause that really got my attention. I'm like, there's no way Jeremy Pielemeyer turned off his cell phone and his car insurance. Yeah. So, um, you know, my story is like, I walked uphill both ways in the snow. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, you, you look at people and you, you hear, um, successful people that gave up things to be successful. You know, they yes. lived in their parents' basement, uh, slept on someone's couch. Um, and so for me, the insurance business was an amazing opportunity to build something long-term. I'm not a, how are things gonna work for me on the next paycheck guy? Ah. I am like, how are things gonna look for me when I'm 35 yes. or 45? Yes. So that later in life, I can have the things that, um, that I've always wanted to have. So you're right, uh, there was a time where I didn't have the money to be an insurance salesman, pay for gas, expenses, and travel. So I canceled my cell phone, super nerdy. Uh, our, our, Did you uh, just door knock the cards or you called from the uh, office? Yes, what? no, our uh, elder care was amazing to me in the beginning. Uh, they provided me a prepaid phone card. Uh, and so when I'd run out of minutes, I would literally call up and say, hey, I need more minutes. And I would set my leads out of a pay phone. Wow. Um, and as, wow. A, as a traveling- Out of a, like a physical pay phone. Yeah, yeah, so Not I had like, you know, the, the, the phone through my window. Like the literal like pay phone, you go and wow. Yeah. In between appointments, I wow. was was setting, <laughs> setting leads and um, would not recommend 
do not cancel your car insurance. Uh, it's probably a liability. <laughs> you're driving around selling yeah. insurance, right? <laughs> but my insurance agent at the time, I sat down and was like, hey, I got to make this insurance a uh, business work. I need to cancel yes. my insurance. It was a couple hundred a month. And um, and so she advised against it and said it was it was reckless, but stupid. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, in order to be successful at anything, you have to make sacrifices. And uh, you got to keep your head down. And in the in the good and bad times, you, you yep. just got to keep pushing. If someone wants to transition from, okay, I can't pay for my own cell phone or car insurance, but I want to get to a higher level and really progress through the success cycle of, of, of insurance, um, what are some key things and tips you would recommend and advise along the way? Yeah, so I think the very first thing, um, and you know, your message, uh, if, if you haven't attended an 8% deal, you've got to go. They're awesome. Um, but is the very first thing you got to do, forget about, forget about training on products, forget about contracting. You, you've got to believe that you can be successful mm. because in order to, to be successful, you've got to see yourself as successful. That's good. So that's where I would start is, is um, just making sure that you're in a situation where uh, you're confident about what you can do. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. That, that's a message that no matter what you do, like personal confidence is really important. A lot of people around the whole planet like deep down as humans, that's something a lot of people struggle with, yeah. right? So what do you do when you're in a slump to find personal confidence if they're going through that right now? So besides like go to the mirror and say, I'm great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm well, kidding. yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think really it's just- Hang around you for a day. No, and no, boost it. I, go, I go to an 8% uh, seminar. <laughs> uh, I think for me, it's just knowing that, um, that the system works Yes. And that when things get off track, I'm just in a slump, like you like you called it. Yeah. And uh, I just keep doing what I know works and it'll come around. Yeah, I love it. Um, we're here at the MedSup Conference in Schaumburg, Illinois. Today's the free day. I'm actually going up to speak on uh, sales training for leads here in like an hour and 11 minutes. Um, not to n n not related to 8%, but just in general, how important is it from a networking standpoint to get out of your hometown, to to, 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 to think bigger, to, to meet people, to network, to be around success people? Like how important is that? Yeah, I think it's huge because I think in order to grow as an individual, um, you know, personally or professionally, you need to learn from great people. Yes. Um, every, every person I think along their road to being successful has come in contact with people that have mentored them to be better. Um, and I mean, how amazing is it that if you can learn, if I can learn from you yeah. um, on mistakes you've already made and fast track what I'm doing, yes. you know, that's yes. that's working smarter, not harder. Exactly. Um, say they want to reach out. They want to follow you on Facebook, Instagram, email you, whatever. Um, spell your spell your full name for them too, just to, uh, I know we're getting a little wind. I want to make sure they can hear this. Um, spell your full name just because it's not all spelled like it may sound. Yeah, so it's Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-I-E. -E -E, uh, and my last name is Pielemeyer. So it's P-I-E-L-E-M-E-I-E-R. Boom. Yeah. Spell the last name one more time. Uh, P-I-E-L-E-M-E-I-E-R. Cool. They want to reach out to you. I guess they could just add you on Facebook. Yeah, so I don't I don't have Facebook, but uh, right. you could email me at Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-I-E, -E -E, at EISgroup.net. So E is an elephant, I, S is in Sam, group.net. E this is where group. I need like a little card that that's says right. Jeremy at EIS. Yes, group. yes, 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 that's okay. a good idea. Okay. Yeah. I love that. All right, dude, thank you for sharing. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank yeah, you for being a, a positive, amazing example for me over the last seven years. Uh, any final words that you want to leave and impart on our uh, subscribers? No, man, I would just check him out. Uh, he's, sure. again, lots of credit to me. Thanks for that. But uh, he's doing amazing things. So, Boom. yeah, thanks for bringing me in. Thank you, Jeremy. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. What would you say to a struggling agent that's considering quitting that they may end up a part of 92%? You know the whole thing I was telling you about that one guy named Hunter whose dad, my mom told him he's a shy guy. One of the people I was working with is a restaurant owner. They sell